think one that changed my career, maybe like that, is the Congo, the pictures in, during the war in Congo. Um, I don't know what happened, but everything sort of came together uh, perfectly. Uh, the story was about how the rebel, uh, um, led by General Nakunda, were um, coming closer to the provincial capital of Goma, which is like, all that area is like mineral rich, right? And it looked like the rebels were going to take Goma. Um, so the, the, there was heavy fighting between the rebels and the government forces. And it was, you know, 250,000 refugees. It was just like biblical. At one point, I saw 60,000 refugees come towards me. The road was full. I mean, it was, I, I literally, you go like, holy crap, this is, this is biblical, this is un, unreal. We had witnessed, um, as it was actually happening, a massacre. And, um, I mean, we didn't see them do it, but, you know, three days later, uh, you know, more people died, so obviously they were still active. And um, that was one of the hardest times I had to question, like, what I was doing, because I was, like, sort of, just, we, there were bodies everywhere, so, but I've, I you know, hung over them and photographed them. I felt like a vulture. I, we all looked like vultures. Um, but then, like, that question came out of mind. Anything, any questionable doubt I had was that why I'm a photographer, and it is to record history, like, collect evidence. Um, and right then I knew that it doesn't matter what my feelings are. Like, how dare I, like, complain about my feelings or my thoughts on that? But look what happened here. This is why we're here, to document. Because if we don't, nobody will ever know that it existed. Like, it'll just be like a nothing. And so, yeah, so that was a hard decision to make, to, to like, stick, engage. And then once I did that, I didn't stop. I photographed every one of them I could, every one of them. This persistence project made me slow down and look again and, and play and wander, you know felt less forced than, than I, I felt I'd, I'd done some of the projects previous to this assignment. But for me it was sort of to create a story that almost felt timeless. So it could be now, it could be 10 years ago, it could be 100 years ago. Uh, and the story is about the, sort of the Swahili people, the people of the coast, and all the people that have landed um, from different parts, like Oman or wherever, on the coastline of Kenya and Tanzania, but I focus on Kenya. Um, and it's a magical place, because, you know, like the, from anything metaphorically, the, the, you know, the, the waves that crash back and forth against, against the coast, and the wave of people that come and go, it's like, it's, it's really interesting how, 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 how so many different kinds of uh, generations and people arrive uh, on the coast to the point where you'll meet an Omani man who's been there, his family's been there a thousand years, and he doesn't call himself Kenyan. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but it's more, for me, it was a break from the lit literal narrative um, of sort of documentary reportage uh, and having to work with, with a narrative that was history, that, that wasn't quite there. I went out with a fisherman who swims in the open ocean and swims deep down and then fishes with his homemade uh, homemade spear gun. Um, it's funny, I, I knew kind of what I wanted, and it, it wasn't allowed to be too direct. So I think the picture you're talking about with the swimmer flippers almost gave too much away. Um, I wanted to get into the water, obviously, because it's a really important aspect of the story. It, it carries everybody back and forth. Um, and I love the picture that opens up the, the project now is it's just of a wave crashing over me um, in the dark clouds. Again, I was so lucky, I couldn't believe it. It was, I mean, the thing is, you point in this direction, it's the dark clouds. You point in that direction, and it's light. So obviously, I then have to force myself to move in a way that I, this scene is the way I want it, uh, the way I feel it. Um, and I think it's, for me, it's very important to shoot like that, to think of it like theater, like a stage, and then everything else slowly comes onto that stage but you start with an empty stage, and then you bring in the right lights, you bring the right situation and mood.